Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, along with all of my fellow Alabamians, have been monitoring closely the rapidly changing development of the coronavirus in our state. <clears throat> As a state, we have taken preliminary measures and made preparations in the case that this virus would eventually reach our state. Our first case of, con of confirmed case was announced earlier today. As I've emphasized time and time again, the safety and health of all Alabamians is paramount. A short time ago, we heard from President Trump, who officially declared a national emergency amidst this outbreak. And this declaration will certainly help us states around the country continue to work to mitigate this virus. In Alabama, we want to work in conjunction with these efforts and to that end, I am now issuing a state of emergency for our state of Alabama. The state of emergency will strengthen our efforts and plans already in place, helping to alleviate our health care facilities and providers, our schools, and in turn, citizens across our state. Additionally, effective um, Wednesday, March 18th, at the close of business, all public K through 12 schools across the state will have a two and a half week break. This is in order to reduce the risk for students, teachers, and others from potentially being exposed to the virus. Folks, let's take a common sense approach and remember that calm and steady win the race. Alabamians should not be fearful but instead use common sense to watch out for ourselves and for others. We will remain engaged and continue to closely monitor the situation to help keep Alabamians informed on all of the facts. The safety and well-being of our citizens is of the utmost importance. Again, I appreciate the hard work of our state health officer, Dr. Scott Harris, State Superintendent Dr. Eric Mackey, Alabama EMA Director Brian Hastings, members of my task force, and countless others. We will handle this situation together. Now I'll turn the program over to Dr. Harris. Thank you very much, Governor Ivey. Uh, thank you. I'm Scott Harris. I'm the State Health Officer. We appreciate you joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, thank you to, to uh, Governor Ivey for your leadership on this issue. Uh, I've spoken to you a few times uh, from this position over the past few days, uh, and we are, are uh, grateful that the governor has, has decided to declare this state of public health emergency. We think that's uh, exactly the right response, and that will help us so much in our ability to carry out our public health functions and make sure that we're protected the health and safety of all Alabamians. Um, I have some additional information to let you know about that we have just learned about in the past few minutes. We, we had a second confirmed case of the coronavirus that uh, we were just notified of uh, less than 30 minutes ago. Um, this was from a person uh, residing in Jefferson County. Um, that uh, patient and that patient's physician uh, have already been notified of, of that. This is a person who has been isolating at home because of illness. Uh, the uh, Jefferson County uh, Health Department uh, is involved with that process, as are uh, ADPH staff, uh, who will be a part of that investigation as well. Um, I would say that this is a very fast-moving situation. We're not surprised to have additional cases, and we have been expecting this for some time. Uh, I would say that also that in, in the past five to ten minutes, just as we were preparing for this press conference, we have some uh, preliminary reports of three additional cases, uh, so that would bring us to a total of five. I don't have uh, full information on that at this time about those locations, but we'll try to provide that for you as soon as possible. Um, again, this is something that we have been expecting. We have known that we probably had disease transmission in our state, um, but as we have ramped up our testing uh, capacity, uh, we are starting to find these cases uh, just like surrounding states have had. 
we have a number of responses that I've talked to you quite a bit over the over the past few days. Uh, one uh, additional thing I'd like to let Alabamians know about tonight is we have a call center that is, will be established starting at 8 a.m. Uh, tomorrow to uh, answer questions and help people who are concerned about whether they are test need testing uh, to uh, call and get information on how they could obtain that. This is not a, a medical information call line to, to talk to a physician or to get a diagnosis, but rather it's a call line that will give you information about how you might be tested depending on where you live and whether you have a doctor. Um, the number uh, for people to call starting tomorrow is 1-888-264-2256. I'll repeat that, 1-888-264-2256. This is a toll-free hotline for people to call if they have questions about whether uh, they uh, need to seek testing. Um, this will put them in touch with their own provider if they have one or try to, uh, to connect them to another uh, provider who can help them make a, uh, a decision about that if they uh, do not have a provider relationship already. Again, that will go live tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Um, I'm sure there will be many people called because many people are concerned about this. So uh, continue to call. We'll increase capacity on, on that hotline um, as needed. And, and so that way everyone will have the opportunity to uh, call and reach someone and speak to a person about that. That's all the uh, new additional information I have at this time. Um, we'll, we'll take questions in, in a few minutes uh, if you have additional questions. But at this time, I'd like to turn the podium over to Dr. Eric Mackey. Thank you, Dr. Harris, and certainly thank you, Governor, for being proactive. Uh, we were very fortunate that the Governor called a task force together several days ago and got way ahead of this before we even had one confirmed case in the state. So we're able to react uh, very quickly as new cases are confirmed. We're also fortunate that she's been very proactive to go ahead and make a decision about what to do with our schools. As the governor said, we'll be closing school at the end of business on Wednesday. That gives uh, parents three days um, extra to begin working on and thinking about um, child care. We didn't want to do something that was too quick because we know that parents need, to make, need some time to make uh, those decisions for their children. Uh, but we will close on Wednesday. We will be closed the two weeks following that. And then we will make um, a decision uh, working with public health and with the governor and her task force uh, during that third week about what we need to do um, going forward. We will not wait until the last minute. Obviously, things are changing very fast, but we want to give um, as we uh, make changes then and make decisions about what we have to do after that last week of the uh, closure, we'll make that decision as quickly as we can based on the information that's available uh, that week. Um, I'm going to also uh, turn it, I think we're going to have questions now. Dr. Harris is going to moderate uh, the questions. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. Um, questions? Yes, Lizzie. Yes. Um, was that, is there a second case in Montgomery? Baptist East put out a press release saying a person in their hospital has it. Um, I, I do not know of a second case in Montgomery County so far. I, I know of one that is in Montgomery, one that is in Jefferson. We did have a report of these, these three others that I just learned about and have very preliminary information about. I don't know where they are located. I think our staff has that information. I honestly just haven't been briefed because we were walking into the room when those reports came through. What you said earlier that the state started testing in-state last week. Um, following that, do you expect more cases to come out? Uh, I think that's very likely, given what we've seen around the country. Um, when we first rolled out our testing, if you remember nationally, all of those tests had to be sent to CDC. Uh, it, it was a slow process and difficult to uh, get tests done because there just wasn't enough capacity initially. Um, now that states have begun testing, um, almost all states were testing by the end of this past week. We are beginning to identify cases, which is exactly what other countries have seen uh, around the world. So it's not surprising at all that we've seen more cases. Can you tell us about the case up in Jefferson County? Um, the, the information I have is that this is a person who traveled internationally uh, and returned uh, to the United States and was ill about the time of returning. Uh, that person uh, saw uh, their own uh, personal uh, uh, physician who requested a test. That test was performed and those results were received by us just about 30 minutes ago. Can you tell us the age range of this person? Uh, I, I don't have that information. Uh, Dr. Mackey, can you tell me, uh, will this impact private schools as well? Uh, this will not impact private schools. This is just for our public K-12 schools. Okay. And 
and then looking at the proclamation, there's some wording about days. Will the schools not have to make up these days at the end of the year? That's correct. So under a state of emergency, uh, there's a provision in the law that we can forgive those days, and that's our intention right now. Well, that, that is what's going to happen with these days. So uh, for the days that are closed, that, that's a total of 12 days. They will not have to make those days up. I do want to say this, too, though, um, on that. You know, the purpose of this is to give the virus more time to hopefully um, mitigate the spread of this disease. And so even though we're closing for two and a half weeks, we want students to be very cautious uh, not to congregate in large groups. Uh, this, they need to take this seriously. Families need to take it seriously and as much as possible um, stay isolated, even uh, they, though they may not be symptomatic, but we don't need large groups of people congregating together. We had put out um, guidance earlier today, uh, canceling school events and uh, some athletic events and other th things where people would be congregating together in large numbers and those are still in effect and those uh, directives actually go through the end of April so we still want to make sure that people continue to self-isolate that they continue to take care of themselves all the things we've said about washing hands um, about um, you know covering coughs all those things still count because even though schools close this is our opportunity to hopefully slow down the spread of the virus factors are you going to look at when determining whether or not to expand the the closure for another week or whatever the case may sure. be? What are those factors that are going to determine that? Well, obviously between now and then we'll be working closely with public health. We'll be looking at um, is there an outbreak? Does this continue to grow? And if so, is it sporadic around the state or is it statewide? Are there, are there communities that are more heavily affected than other communities? Those are the kinds of things we'll look at. We also will be looking at um, how it affects our school communities. So one of the things, we, we'll be sending guidance out to superintendents this evening. Uh, one of the things we're going to be asking them is to continue to report to us, as we had asked them before, if there are students or staff or family members who have confirmations of uh, COVID-19 because we, we want to continue to monitor that on a daily basis. That'll go into our decision about what we need to do um, as we approach the end of the month. For our viewers that may be just tuning in, can you repeat the days that schools will close and open? Yes, school will close uh, next Wednesday. I think that's the 18th of March. I got my day right and then we'll reopen. So at the end of the day, on the 18th, we will close, and we will remain closed for two full weeks after that um, with a target of reopening on April the 6th, Monday, April 6th. And I want to emphasize that as a target. We will reassess during the last week of March um, what's going on, working with public health, and make a decision during the last week of March as to what needs to happen next. But that would be our, our goal for now. Dr. How are school athletics impacted? Uh, school athletics will, there will be no participation, no athletic events during this time. Are districts expected to provide virtual learning in any aspect during this time? No, school, school, this school will be closed. Uh, we do have, I know that we have um, some, some schools that are going to be sending home <coughs> projects. Um, I'm, I'm sure that by between now and Wednesday, again, that's another reason to give us some time to uh, ramp this up. So teachers may want to send some reading projects home. They may want to send home some electronic projects, but but it will not be an E-day. School will be closed during those two and a half weeks. And what services is the um, Department of Education going to provide when it comes to food and these other services that a lot of students receive inside the school? Sure, excellent question. Uh, we are already in the process. Again, uh, the governor's been very proactive, and so we have already worked with the United States Department of Agriculture on a waiver. Um, the USDA is willing to give a waiver to states for communities that have high poverty, which is 50% of their students, 50% uh, or more of the students in, that qualify for free or reduced lunches. In those schools that are high poverty, we can continue to prepare uh, meals for students who qualify for free or reduced lunches. Um, we are working with districts now on that. I want to, be, to emphasize we, we have the waiver in process. We, have, we know for sure the waiver will be approved. We have no reason to doubt that. But that does not make it easy um, to get the meals to students. So just because we can pre prepare the meals, obviously we have distribution problems. Uh, we have been working on that this afternoon with our staff. In some cases, uh, families may come to the school and pick meals up. 
In other cases, uh, there we may use some community volunteers to deliver meals. We obviously are also going to follow um, health department regulations. So if they're hot meals, uh, we can't take hot meals out unless we have the, the proper way to transport them. But but we have actually been working on that um, all day today. Our staff's been on that, and so we're, we're communicating with local superintendents on that. Um, some communities may not have the capacity to do that, to deliver the meals, but on a case-by-case uh, -case basis, as much as possible, we will continue food service. Do you anticipate when you'll be able to start providing that food service? Uh, no, I don't, don't have a good answer for that right now. Do the closings apply to the uh, state's pre-kindergarten program? If it's a pre-K class that's in one of our public schools, yes, it does. And I, I don't know about uh, the other pre-K classrooms. I, I would imagine uh, we've actually had communication today with several private schools around the state because many of them follow the public school schedule. Uh, many of them have said they want to, to follow what we do in the public schools, but I'm not prepared to say like each one what decision they would have made. But if 70% uh, of our first class pre-K classes are in a, a public school and all of those will be closed. Anyone else? We have additional questions? Uh, you know, for people who, and I kind of asked this earlier, but, you know, people are going to the stores, some people are afraid to go out in public. I talked with some friends who said they're afraid to go to restaurants, they don't know who has it, that's part of the concern here. Should people be concerned? I mean, we're closing down schools and that automatically puts an, an element of panic into the room. I mean, what's your message to people? Sure, I, I think we recognize that, that people are concerned and when hearing about uh, an outbreak going on in other states, it, it certainly makes people anxious. That's that's a perfectly normal way to feel and we understand that and yet we think we have a good plan in place to, to handle this and to mitigate the spread of this disease uh, I think closing the schools is a terrific idea and out of an abundance of caution it's a great way uh, to limit transmission in the communities and at the same time we don't actually have cases that we're aware of in our schools but yet it's a great proactive step to to slow the the uh, speed of transmission in the community what, what I would tell people uh, is similar to what we talked about yesterday um, please use your normal prudence. Um, be smart about hygiene. Be smart about covering your cough, about washing your hands. Uh, please stay home if you're sick. If there's a chance that you, that you could be ill, we would want you to stay home and try to contact your provider and minimize the chance of spreading that to someone else. For those people who are particularly vulnerable, uh, people like the elderly, people that have certain chronic health problems. I think those people in particular need to be prudent about being in large groups of people uh, where they could be exposed to someone with an illness without even realizing it. Uh, the, the guidance that we gave yesterday um, was a recommendation to avoid mass gatherings, and, and we define that as, as 500 people or more. And, and of course, any number you choose is going to be somewhat arbitrary uh, in a way. R really more important than what the actual number is, is uh, to ask the question, can you maintain a safe distance between people to minimize the spread of disease? And from what we know about coronavirus, um, there seems to be something about a six foot range that, that's important in the transmit, transmission of that disease. So being uh, within six feet of someone who's ill and for a prolonged period is how this disease tends to spread. So it, it's really much more important to try to minimize the spread by observing that rule. Um, so our, our recommendation would be to avoid any type of, of crowding situation where you could maintain that, that uh, six foot rule. Uh, and you know, if you're gonna be in a space for a prolonged period of time, uh, more so than, than an actual number. Um, I don't think people need to be frightened at all. Um, I think that they need to use normal, uh, normal prudence. Uh, and uh, I think together we will be able to get through with this, uh, get through this. We, we know that in other um, spreads of outbreaks, there's a defined period of time and, and the, the time is not exactly known right now, uh, but we know that as we continue to work on this, at some point we'll get through this. Is there any concern with kids being out of school that their parents may be some sort of medical per uh, personnel, EMTs, whatever, and they may not be able to go to work because their kids are out? Sure. I, I, Dr. Mackey may be able to address that even better than me, but, but obviously there are a lot of considerations that go into a decision about closing schools. Certainly um, parents who are, who are directly responsible for caring kids, may, caring for those kids may have to make changes. And so obviously there are uh, effects on workforce when, when kids all have to stay home. Um, and, and when you look at all those things on balance, I, I do feel that this was the right decision about closing schools, but certainly we have to be aware of that fact as well. 
I know you don't have a crystal ball, but where do you hope we'll be a month from now? Um, I, I would hope that we, uh, I will say, first of all, we probably expect to continue seeing cases um, as we continue to ramp up our testing capacity. More cases will come in. I would hope that a month from now we'll be seeing less cases or, or seeing new cases at a slower rate. Um, but the fact is it's just too soon to say right now. Th this is a new virus. We don't really know what the... Uh, what, what the activity of the virus is going to be and how long things are going to continue. Um, we, we can get some uh, messages from looking at other parts of the world. Um, we, we can't exactly correlate what happens in this country with China, for example. But in China, you can see that they had pretty significant activity for about three months, and things have slowed there uh, significantly uh, in, in the past few weeks. So it, it's possible that it could be uh, similar here, but we just don't know right now. Governor Ivey. Um, how confident should the people of Alabama be? You're leading the charge in this, but how confident should the people of Alabama be in that the state has a handle on coronavirus? Well, the people of Alabama can trust the members of um, the uh, study commission that I have supporting this effort, certainly Dr. Harris, Dr. Mackey, and we're being very thorough. And I think the people of Alabama trust us when we say we are being very thorough. And um, this is an ever-changing uh, situation. The virus is unknown, so we are ever-changing, but we're nimble, and we will face these challenges as they come. Governor, are you concerned for the economy at all? We've seen some stores you know, kind of close down. People say they're not going to go out to eat as much. Is there any concern there? Well, there's no question that this whole thing is slowing down activity and travels and tourism and whatever, so there's no doubt that it's affecting it. But I was pleased to see the stock market started going back up today after the president started his um, uh, press conference announcing a national state of emergency. If I understood it right, the emergency order means that the schools won't have to make up the days. Is, is there any other significance to the emergency order? Is it? Well, the emergency order for the state is, is um, very fluid and very flexible. And, for example, as governor of the state of Alabama, I could say all state employees are not coming to work. But we're not doing that. We want all state employees to continue to come to work. But uh, the, the state of emergency gives the governor uh, broad and flexible powers, and we'll use what we need to uh, in the most prudent manner possible. You've got two weeks with kids going to be out of school. It's nice weather right now. Parents are going to have to be dealing with some kids that are wanting to get out and go do something. What do you suggest parents and families do with this nice weather, but they can't get out and actually be out in big uh, audiences and stuff? Well, maybe they can find a swimming pool somewhere. <laughs> Thank y'all. Thank you very much. Th thank you very much. We appreciate you being here today. Thanks so much.